Good evening, and welcome to Scarecrow's News Rant. This is that little piece of the show where you know, I focus on a few items that really, really, really pissed me off. Uh, you know, tomorrow is the big day. You know, there's this, you know, big hunk of rock coming in that I hear is, you know, supposed to miss us by like 15 minutes. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, once again, you know, don't, don't want to scare anybody. You know, uh, uh, all the numbers indicate this sucker's going to miss us. So, you know, it's not like, you know, you're going to find this thing sitting in your backyard or squashing your Toyota. But, um, it should give you a moment's pause. I mean, we're kind of, you know, flying around in a, in a, in a, in a billiards tournament out here in, uh, near space. And, uh, uh, there is another one coming in that could get really exciting towards Thanksgiving. Now, as, as we know more about that one, we'll, we'll keep you informed. Uh, but this one coming in right now, um, you know, the one that's the one that's coming by tomorrow, that should be interesting. That should be very, very interesting. Uh, it is going to miss us. It's not going to hit. Uh, this thing is a good bit bigger than a bread box. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, uh, it would fill a football field. It's big. Um, if this thing hit the earth, um, it could take out a city, you know, an entire city. It's not big enough to wipe out human life like the dinosaurs got wiped out you know millions of years ago but um it should give you a moment's pause uh that a rock like that could fly in so darn close to us now this one that's coming in that i was talking about for you know long about thanksgiving of this year uh this thing is planet size it is known to have its own moons circling it yeah, is big. It could qualify as a planet if it was not on a cometary type elliptical orbit. Now, my understanding is that the, the numbers on this one is that it's going to pass extremely close to Mars. Close enough to Mars that Mars will actually go right through its coma, its tail as it passes. Uh, that could be one of the most interesting cometary events since that uh, Schumacher thing uh, pelted uh, Jupiter way back when. How many of you remember that? You know, we actually got to see really good pictures because of the, uh, uh, the Hubble uh, Space Telescope. We got to see some really interesting pictures of just what happens to a planet when it's hit by a you know, the Schumacher uh, was a it was kind of a small uh, uh, comet. It wasn't that big. Uh, this sucker coming in that's going to pass close to Mars is big. Now, luckily, we're going to be on the other side of the sun when this puppy comes through. So, you know, no chance of it messing with us. But we may get to see some fireworks if a certain Mr. Belikovsky was right and the electric universe theory is indeed a correct interpretation of how celestial bodies interact. Something to keep an eye on. Something to something to know if if the knowledge does come down the pike. Now, you know, one of the uh regular participants in our chat room, a fellow by the name of uh Tommy Reed, came on a little bit ago and uh, uh showed us uh you know his his uh prototype that he's putting together uh, uh for a uh uh, a 3D printer. Now, for those of you who do not understand what rip wrap is and what 3D printing is all about, basically what you've got is you've got, you know, think of an inkjet printer that can operate in three dimensions, not just in a single dimension uh, across a piece of paper. It can actually operate in three dimensions. And as it passes over the target, it lays out a very precise, very small amount of material. In the case of most of these 3D printers, it's a, uh, a high-density plastic. Most people are using ABS, although there, there are other materials that, that are apparently suitable for this. 
uh, by very carefully depositing this material very meticulously under computer control and in three dimensions, you can very slowly build up a three-dimensional object. Okay, it's, you know, it's a technology that right now is still in its infancy. Uh, a lot of hobbyists are playing with this because, you know, it's just flat cool. Uh, you know, it has been shown, uh, you know, there, there are commercial versions of this thing. I mean, if you've got enough money, you can go out and buy one. But, you know, buying one of these bad boys is like buying, you know, a, um, a first generation photocopier. I remember when photocopiers first came out, you know, you had to mortgage the farm to buy one. They were expensive. Now, of course, nowadays you, you can go up to Staples and get a pretty darn good copier for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, but boy, when those things first came out, they were big, they were huge, only big businesses could afford them, they were extremely expensive. Well, that's where we're at with 3D printing right now. The fact that Tommy Reed has put on the table uh, the proposition that he can build one that works for 300 bucks or less, uh, that's a pretty interesting project, and all you naysayers out there who are giving Tommy a hard time about it, uh, frankly... You should be keeping an eye on that because if he actually pulls that off, uh, it's worth it's worth maybe pursuing as a uh, as a technology to follow. Okay, so we got this new technology, and yeah, uh, there was a, a, a video on YouTube not too long ago, some fellow who uh, actually used a 3D printer to print the lower receiver for a. AR-15. And damn if it didn't work. Matter of fact, worked fine. Now, to understand the significance of this, you can go out and buy the upper for an AR-15 without showing a driver's license, because all it is is a part. Okay, it's a part. It's not the registered piece to the firearm. The lower receiver is the part that carries the serial number and is registered as a firearm. So if you were capable of producing on a 3D printer your very own lower receiver, you could easily go by the upper and have a complete firearm. And to be honest with you, the way the gun laws are written in the United States, that firearm would be perfectly legal. Yeah. Well, this guy followed up, same guy, followed up not too much later with a 30-round magazine for an AR. Okay, so now he's got a lower, and he's got a 30-round magazine. And basically what he's doing is he's saying to the, you know, the gun control nuts, look, you whack jobs, you know, get off it. You know, anybody with the will and the and the skill uh, can manufacture their own firearm that's as good as anything that's out there so uh, you know all this gun control is just nonsense okay that was the argument he was trying to, to put out so we got this new technology and it's proving to be a very useful very interesting technology suppose you didn't like 3D printing. Suppose you felt threatened by 3D printing. What would you do about it? Yeah. During his State of the Union address, President Obama mentioned 3D printing as one of those up-and-coming technologies that was going to once again boost America into the forefront and that the government was going to get behind it with its full backing and support. Quickest way to kill 3D printing? Get the government involved. Yeah, I think that qualifies. Hmm. Moving right along. Do 
I even really want to discuss? Do I even really want to discuss this? I mean, what do these two guys have in common? Okay, what do these two guys have in common? Yeah. <clears throat> the Pentagon has unveiled a new medal. Matter of fact, they just did this yesterday. This is a medal to honor extraordinary troops who launch cyber attacks or drone strikes from their consoles outside Las Vegas, even if they don't really risk their lives in com combat. This fellow here, this is uh, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, and he says, uh, you know, our military reserves its highest decorations, obviously, for those who display gallantry and valor in action where their lives are on the line, and we will continue to do so. But we should also have the ability to honor the extraordinary actions that make a true difference in combat operations. Remember that CISPA thing, CISPA, C-I-S-P-A, Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. Remember that? You thought it was dead, didn't you? You thought that all those phone calls and letters and, 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 and beefing at your congressman, you thought we whooped them, didn't you? <laughs> you thought you whooped them. Well, I got news for you. The uh, Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act is kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'd be back. And so it is. It was recently announced that CISPA will once again be coming for a vote in the United States Congress. Lawmakers cited increased threats from hackers and cyber espionage as the motivation for its reintroduction. Now, they're going to sell this thing. They're going to sell it hard. Uh, there's no question that the government wants it. And, and you know, here, here, I don't care what you think of WikiLeaks, okay? I don't care what you think of WikiLeaks. You know, there's people out there, oh, WikiLeaks is, uh, you know, just a false flag or they're, they're just, you know, spouting the government line or... You know, they don't pick on Israel, so they can't be on our side or something. You know, I mean, I've heard every argument in the universe. But the fact is, WikiLeaks, as a do-gooder outfit, did get some very interesting material out that I can't imagine that any of the powers that be really wanted to see. Now, whether it was, you know, somebody inside with the CIA leaking it to WikiLeaks or whatever, I don't care. I don't care. The fact that there are outfits like WikiLeaks that are doing real, honest-to-God, old-fashioned investigative reporting where they are holding corporations and government, where they're holding their feet to the fire, finding out their dirty laundry, and making sure that the people know who's dirty and just how dirty. The fact that there are outfits out there like that is encouraging. Frankly, we need a hell of a lot more of it. Because you ain't getting it from the New York Times. You ain't getting it from the Washington Post. You ain't getting it from Reuters. And you ain't getting it from AP. But, in this day of Osama bin Laden hiding in your computer, just imagine if Bank of America knew that WikiLeaks 
had obtained a cache of its internal documents. The very instant the transmission was made and put a financial blockade against WikiLeaks before they could even examine the files. Because CISPA words the definition of cyber, cyber threat intelligence to include theft or misappropriation of private or government information and intellectual property. Okay, that's, ex that, that's precisely what's at stake here. Okay, they're going to sell it, you know, Oh, well, you know, we're, we're only interested in saving the children from Internet porn. Or we're, we're only pushing this to, uh, to, to help the uh, music industry because there, there's people, you know, out there sharing music without buying it from the music companies. Yeah, that's the way they're going to sell this to people. But what it's really going to do is it's going to put yet another obstacle between you and the truth. CISPA, CISPA, C-I-S-P-A, Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. Please, it may or may not do any damn good. You know, these guys have a habit of doing what they damn well please, regardless of what you think. But let them know what you think. Let them know what you think. CISPA, Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act. It's yet another assault on your privacy and your ability to find out the truth. And you betcha, that's bullshit. And yes, that's going to be it for Scarecrow's News Rant tonight. Hope I gave you some things to think about. And uh, yeah, take a look up every now and then. There are things in the universe bigger than all of us. Well, as I mentioned... Uh,